everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Successful Women's TV Show. My name is Galit Ventura Rosen, and I am co-founder of Everyday Woman TV. One of my favorite things to do every week is bring you a woman that does what she loves and is out there serving and empowering others. Today is no exception. I have Carmen joining me from Portland, Oregon. Welcome. Thank you, Galit. I'm super excited to be here and have this conversation. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited about the topic we're going to be talking about. So definitely stick around how to connect with your audience on an emotional level, which all of us know is such a important topic related to attracting your ideal client. So let me share a little bit about Carmen and we will get started. Carmen Reed Gilgeson. Did I say that right? Gilkison? That's right. Yeah. That's Gilkison. Right. Perfect. Carmen Reed Gilkison. She is a business strategist online business manager and whole person certified coach with Encore Empower LLC, which is her own company. She, oh wow, 25 plus years? Yeah. Amazing, 25 plus years of marketing experience. And she specializes in mindset, in entrepreneurship and marketing. Her and her business partner, is it Deirdre Harder? Deirdre. Yeah. Teach their clients the business of business through their year-long coaching program with the goal of helping ambitious women scale their service-based businesses without all the guesswork. Who wants to do the guessing? That <laughs> makes sense to me. Oh, I right. love that you've been doing this for so long. It's so wonderful to meet women that have had such a passion to be doing this for so long because you love it so much. So thank you, thank you. All right, let's get started. When we talk about connecting with your audience on an emotional level, talk to me about what that means. Well, let's talk about it when you, in our real, our regular day-to-day -day life. Okay. So everyone, most people have certain hobbies, either they're dog lovers, they <clears throat> play sports, they follow sports, <clears throat> excuse me. That's okay. And, you know, or they, they, they craft, they have whatever hobby. So when you're in the realm of that hobby, whatever it is, there's certain language going on. You understand those people because you love that, right? And so when you're talking to someone else who has the same hobby as you, you guys have your own language. Well, the same is true for our ideal clients. And we need to just figure out what their language is and make sure we're speaking their language and not ours, which is a very big mistake that is easily made because what happens is we become the expert in our industry or what we're doing and we're teaching people and we forget what it was like for us way back when. And our clients may be, we may be helping beginners, we may be helping intermediate, we may be helping more advanced, but regardless of that, we're ahead of them in what we know. And we have to make sure that we are able to understand what they're going through, what they're feeling, what their pain points are. And it's not just pain points like I don't know how to write copy, so I need a copywriter. It's pain points like, well, how is the how are the events of the world affecting them right now? You know, we've gone through some big, huge th things over these last few years with COVID and the recession and all kinds of stuff going on, all the different weather events. And so when you have clients that are maybe affected by not only the big things, but maybe they're in a tornado zone, maybe they're here, maybe they're there those kind of things, they will see things differently than clients somewhere else. And so we need to know, and the re the way that we find out is we get into conversation with them. So for me, the biggest piece and the biggest learning from having so much, also so many years is we don't do enough listening. Yes. We assume and we think we know what they need, but we don't listen. And clients can tell that. I'm just like you, Carmen, most of the women that I work with, we meet through Zoom. Some of them we never meet in person, Yeah, right? Some will never meet. They just have connected and we're on Zooms once a month or whatever, twice a month. And I have learned our biggest thing is we don't listen. Even just in this interview, I'm not off in another world, zoned off. I'm actually hearing you say what you're saying so I know how to respond. So right. I love that you started with that because I think that's a really big piece of why we don't close our clients. Yes. And so I think do do? to to add on to that piece specifically, the listening piece, you know, it's said that uh, you're not being a good listener if you're listening just to, to, to find out when the person's going to stop talking so you can say your next thing. 
that is what I think we all do. Uh, and it's very easy, depending if we're talking on making sales here, closing a client, sometimes we need a little bit of help. We might need a framework. We might need a script, but we don't ever want to come across as scripted. And we want to learn how to connect with the audience on an emotional level, which means when we're sitting across from that person, whether it's Zoom or in person, you're actually listening to their needs, wants, and desires. Because you could have a script that supposedly closes 90% of the time, but this person might be in that 10% and say something that isn't on that script. So, you know, it's fine to have these tools that help us, but the best thing you can do, no matter what business you're in, no matter what niche is to get to know your ideal clients and prospects, because they yeah. will tell you what matters. And then you don't have to guess, right? We like to take the guesswork out of everything. And, and your clients and prospects will tell you if you are willing to listen. Yes. And I have found that when everybody, when they first get started, you're still learning, right? When I got started in the online world eight years ago, even though I've had my own business for 27 years, it was a whole nother ball game talking to people. And at first I remember I spent a whole summer only getting on calls with potential clients. Carmen, I met with 60 people in a summer Wow! and I didn't close one. Yeah. Do you know how much learning I did that summer? Yeah to a point where now I get on and it's, I don't really need to do anything. It's just listening, understanding, meeting what they want, always mm -hmm. focusing on benefiting them. So talk to me about some of the th other things we can be doing aside from listening to really connect emotionally with our audience. Well, I'm going to say two words that a lot of people might cringe at, but it's market <laughs> research. And I'm ready. And what you talked about was market research. It is sitting down and having that time. And a lot of people want to just get to the sale. They want to get going. They're excited about their offer. They want to start helping people. But you can't help people if you don't fully understand them. And even though you are the expert, you understand your industry, you might not understand the people. So what we like to teach our clients is to create an ideal client language bank. And that looks like we say there's two methods of market research. There's low touch and there's high touch. What you did during that summer, that's high touch. And that's the best one because you're actually speaking with people. Low touch mm -hmm. is also helpful. And that looks like if you're on Facebook or in LinkedIn yes. and you're on a group and you're or or DMing, you're following, or DMing yeah. and you are looking at the phrases and the words that they're using. And then yeah. you want to put those exact phrases and words into your Perfect. ideal client language bank to then use in your content. And that's what's going to stop the scroll, right? Yes. So we hear about all these things with marketing and the flavor of the day. Here's the new thing. Be on this platform. Be on that one. Do this for this many times, whatever it is. But you can never go wrong as long as what you're putting out there is your ideal client's language. So I tend to, and my, my business partner, I tend to not want to follow the flavor of the day. We like the tried and true stuff. But if you do want to, and you want to get in on the you know front end of some new thing, that's great. But you're going to have 10 times the luck and the success if you're using your ideal client language. So really what I'm trying to say here is it doesn't matter the marketing platform you choose. What matters is your marketing message. And when your ideal client is scrolling through and they see something and they think, oh my gosh, it's like she's inside my head. That's what we're going for here. And the only that. way you'll get there is if you do use that ideal client language. So I love, I love that you said getting in their head. I know it sounds a little goofy when we say it, but in all honesty, they're talking to themselves and there's thoughts that are going through their head. And it's almost as if we need to try to read their mind, but obviously we'll have to do it from watching them or listening to them. When I say watching, I meant on social media. Yeah. What are they doing? What are they posting? What are they feeling? Getting on a Zoom call. I'm, I'm an old school girl. I like to see people. Yeah. I don't like to get on phone calls. And in my other industry, we're always on the phone with people and that's fine. But I love that during COVID, it became so normal to get on Zoom with people because mm -hmm. it gives you so much insight when you see their body language, their emotions, their face expressions. And I, I really love that so much. So let's talk some more about this, this emotional part. I really want to understand when you talk about how to connect emotionally, what are some of the other things that you and your partner are using and teaching your clients to be able to, because we all know most buying is done from the emotional side. That's right. Yes. So talk to us about that. So yeah, Gallup 
polls did a um, study where they came up with the fact that 70% of all decisions are made based on emotion. Okay, now, 70%. if you're like me, I like to research and do all this stuff. But really, if I'm honest with myself, I know what I'm going to pick first. I kind of just do the research afterwards just to make my, to justify it. Right? Justify. I was just about to say, I'm at a point where I've got to justify it. Yes. But you kind of know. And so what is that? What is that when you're feeling that? It's because that company, that brand, that person has connected with you on an emotional level. And that mm -hmm. just goes back to what we're saying. They're using terms and terminology and painting a picture for you that you already have in your mind. It's like, it's like they're reading your mind. So you're looking at the, whatever it is, it's an advertisement, a commercial, you're talking to someone and they're describing how they help and what they help people overcome. And they're using that language that paints the picture that you already have in your mind. So that is getting in their head, right? And you get that by what you did that one summer, Galit, was awesome because you talked to 60 people. The more people that you talk to, the more you get to see a great baseline of data and you get to see the averages, you get to see the things too that stand out. So we don't wanna only talk to like 10 people and, and decide that we've got it done because 10 people could give you 10 different things that they are focused on. You've gotta have a good enough um, data set to understand that, okay, this thing really keeps coming back up. A lot of people say this, most people say this, but this one, everyone says. And so, you, and you can use almost everything that you collect because you're going to speak to different people on different things. So, so for me, what I have found that helps me, and yeah. I don't do a lot of private coaching anymore. We do a lot of group stuff, but for me, when, what I have found that helps me is I actually will take a pen and make notes. Yeah. So I will write down, this happened just the other day. We met with a client, my business partner and I from Everyday Woman, and I took notes and I just write down keywords. I don't write yes. paragraphs. I just wrote down keywords. And for two reasons, number one, I'm going to forward a proposal when we're done talking because most of my work is done through proposals, not on the spot because I... I create and customize things for our clients. Yeah. The sec, but it's okay to make the sell there. I used to do that for coaching. And mm -hmm. then the second thing I learned is I now can talk back to that point. That's so right. once I listen, I listen. And sometimes people will talk for five, six minutes and I can't remember everything they said. That's so right. now I'll take my notes and I'll see the four or five key words, which in my opinion were the emotional words. And now I'll talk back, like you said, use their language. Mm -hmm. So I'm speaking to them, not just using my voice, they're hearing me. That's right. Is that some of the stuff that you guys are teaching or what else can we be sharing that would work for those that don't have the script, don't have the layout of how they're going to talk to these clients? Definitely. That's exactly, that's exactly, that's a great uh, strategy is to take notes. I mean, taking notes, if you can, if you're getting on zoom and you can record it and you can get a transcript, okay. that's awesome. Totally. Um, always ask permission first. Usually nowadays people know if you're recording, but the, that's what you're doing is you're looking for those things. So you can come back and say, you can understand the objections and you can understand the pain points because they could say something in an email, but when you get in front of them or talk to them in person on, on a call or whatever, you're going to get deeper. They're going to go deeper because you're in a conversation. So taking notes is the perfect thing to do because then you can say, I understand that what's most important to you is whatever they said. Right. And so then they're, then they're like, oh my gosh, I was seen and heard. And that's what we all want. We all want to be seen and heard. And that's the whole power behind this connecting on an emotional level. So do you also work with your clients to help them with objections? Yes. So objections, the greatest things with objections are to you educate around those. So as you're collecting this data, when you're talking to people, you're seeing people say, uh, I would love to have a personal stylist, but I just can't afford it. And so you, you know, I'm just throwing something out here. Yeah. But let's say a lot of times it's the price of something that is an objection. So then you start educating your client around whatever it is you do and instruct them or educate them on how you're different and what it is. And it's not just the, you get this, 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 and this, this goes then back to painting that picture for them. That's already in their head. Right? So if they, you know, do you feel like every time you open your closet, you 
want to cry because you can't find something to wear? Uh, do you want to impress your next client? You know, whatever the thing is that you find. So then you're painting that picture and in your content, you're doing bits about this, whether it's videos or whether it's social media, whether it's blogging, whether it's emails, you're educating around these little things that you find. So all of this, it's not just for the sales call, it's to use in your content to showcase how you help overcome these objections. I love that. And that really is where most people stop. They start getting nervous or they're, I can't afford it. And they don't understand that not affording it isn't always really what's going on. That's just what they're saying, but there's so much more to unpack underneath it in a sense, yeah. the layers. So I've learned from experience now. I I came from a world of selling commercial real estate buildings. That's what I, that's my main business. Well, it's not yeah. my main, but it's one of them. And we sell things based on a piece, one piece of paper that has numbers and, and breakdowns of how much money you're going to make. Now I'm talking to emotional women. Sorry, we're all emotional. Yeah. And I had to learn so much. And that summer, I was able to understand how women's emotions work because I am a little bit different from that. So I can't assume they're like me. Yeah. So I love that you talked about the objections. I loved you talked about connecting emotionally. I love that you talked about really listening to what your client wants and not trying to hear them or push on them your expertise. Typically, a lot of times they're already on the call with you because they know you're an expert. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, I love all of that so much, Carmen. I would love for you to share a little bit more about you and where people can get a hold of you, learn more about you, work with you. Yeah, I would love to share share that. So the best place to find us is at our website, EncoreEmpire.com. We have a free workshop that is called the Marketing Methodology Workshop that I'd love to invite your listeners and watchers to attend. It's on demand, so it's during your time. But we go deep into this connecting with your audience on an emotional level and how to use content to lead your prospects where you want them to go. So it's very, it's very powerful. We have tons of testimonials. People absolutely love it. And the link for that one is EncoreEmpire.com forward slash SWTV. Perfect. Perfect. I love that. And they can go ahead and grab it once they go on to the site. Yep. It's immediately accessible. Yes. And you're all over social media as the company name or your personal name? Uh, they can connect with me personally on LinkedIn. They can connect with the company. We have a great Facebook group. It's called the Empire of Unstoppable Midlife Entrepreneurs. Perfect. Perfect. That sounds like an easy way to find you. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us about how to connect with your audience on an emotional level. I think that's such a big piece of success in your business and definitely closing and making the sale. And I always like to say, we all love what we do, but we also deserve to make money doing it. So I think it's important to know things like this. So thanks for joining us today, Carmen. Thank you, Galit. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for watching and listening to another episode of the Successful Women's TV Show. Please make sure to watch the other hosts on EverydayWomenTV.com. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye, everybody. Thank you.